In the episode of Vodafone Healthline, we are coming to you from some principal streets in Accra. On today's episode, we will be talking about cancers that particularly affect women in our specialist segment. We will be discussing ovarian cancers, cervical cancers and uterine cancers. In the Midbuster segment, we will talk about a very critical issue. Does oral sex cause cancer? This week in medicine, we will be discussing a rare occurrence, fetus in fetus. We will be talking about the fetus Lastly, Jewels in the Kitchen, our nutritionist Fema will tell us about the benefits of a vegetable as common as onion. Mama Uncle Baby, we'll be right back. Part of a greater data world of endless possibilities on Vodafone. With the best value and amazing data offers and services in Ghana, you can now dream bigger, explore wider, go further, get more for less with Vodafone data. We can do anything we put our mind to. Vodafone. Further. Together. I never pin a watch a day or cause a cancer. But does oral sex cause cancer? Let's find out in the Mythbuster. <laughs> yes, yes. The animation was just on spot point. on. Yes. I like the eyebrow thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's not say. I think you know that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. People have terms. I like that. Mm. I like that. It's important to have terms. <laughs> but oral sex, does it cause cancer? Um, to say this is totally a myth will be false. Mm. I think so too. So. Generally, cancer is or you're multifactorial mm. because same risk factors and we're exposed to out to it, you may not necessarily develop yes. cancer. Yes. Or, um, or yeah, being exposed to the risk factor, your body's ability to repair damaged cells, you know, put them back on track, kill them off, or mm. so it's multifactorial. Mm. Has there been a causal link? Mm. Has there been a causal link to Oral cancers and oral sex. Mm. Yes, there's been. It should not increase risk, causal link. So like when I say a causal link, yeah. chere, um, now mm -hmm. the current um, evidence yes. is saying that, so you know, first, and that, most of the oral cancers and are going more, the risk factors were strongly alcohol, smoking. Mm -hmm. But now, what would they, HPV, our human papilloma virus infection, and yeah. Is increasing mm. in the patients mm. or oral cancers. Mm. Yes, those who smoke, those who drink, also have an even further increase their risk of developing the cancer. But um, that strong correlation is being is becoming manifest. Huh. So um, to say that oral sex no cause a cancer, I wouldn't say that. Mm. 
but can oral sex predispose you to yes. I'll say yes. To oral cancer. Um other things you can do. Yes. Watch your sexual life. Mm. Risky sexual behaviors, mm. multiple sexual partners because genital warts, STIs, all those things put you at increased risk of old HPV and all that. So, watch your sexual behaviors and it should always be a discussion between, especially when we talk about married people, it should be a discussion between the two, mm. knowing the risks and the potential benefits. Mm. Mm. Papa, anything you want to add? Also, risky sexual behavior, I'll just pick up on that bit. Sometimes, through no fault of yours, so you don't have a risky sexual behavior, you don't have too much of any exposure as far as these things are concerned, but the partner that you're married to, because of the exposure he or she has had, predisposes you Mm. Um, if if you engage in mm. oral sex with with, the, with this particular partner, mm. and the thing is that you know the body has organisms that are in certain places that tend to be okay. Mm. So if it is found in a particular part of the body, mm. it lives there and it's okay. That's where it's normally found. Mm. But if it tends to be relocated from that place to a new place, then it might stimulate yeah. uh, cancer. So that's what happens when HPV, which can cause problems in the genital area. Uh, cervical cancer. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Gets moved to the mouth. Another area, the mouth, for example. And then it can predispose to cancers mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. Risky sexual behavior. The question is who defines what risky is? You know, but I think that one man, one bullet is not risky. Um okay, so you can say what is not risky. Mm -hmm. What is risky, you know they could be an decided what I think is risky. Mm -hmm. One man, me. one bullet, or chede, key and hole. Two. One man, one bullet, and make a day. So, we are one man. One bullet, no matter where you shoot, be brave. One man, one bullet. So, <laughs> inverse relationship. One man, one bullet. One man, one bullet. <laughs> ah, okay. One so bullet. One bullet. Thank you very much. <laughs> In That's this present day and age. Oh, I think it's very possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but um well just like you said an assessment and a talk with your partner you know what you want to do generally the various things we do can predispose us to cancers what we eat how much alcohol you drink smoking can all predispose you to cancers the advice live a healthy life let's go to our kitchen to listen to our favorite nutritionist Fema. talk to us about the health benefits of onion Welcome back to Jewels in the Kitchen with me, Frima. And now you can join me with some onions. Yes. We try to join you with some onions. Yes. We try to join you with some onions. Yes. We try to join you with some onions. Yes. We try to join you with some onions. Yes. Anti inflammatory. We can jump. Wow. Anti inflammatory. We can say, say, could be a woman. A woman, my body needs to meet a cool chrono. Jane, a war antioxidants into chess and map of the ding pie, my name check. Jane is antibacterial and which I say boost the immune system. Jane is to say garlic number last time, no? a walk man a pie, and to be pre management, son of money now. Jane boy, Jane actually so so boy with sugar control. And you know, why not? It's a win win. Into a coming quire for the sake of your gut as well. In car, who could be Jane Becker or Jane? And you not be so much afraid to cut those onions in the kitchen. And I'm what? Now, Jane, no one does it have the same effect? Similar. Ah. Similar. The pungent um, nature of the onions, any garlic, honey, the things that give the antioxidants, they are the things that give the heart protecting properties. And the gut health, Nadia, is not dependent on whether it's cooked or not. Right. Because fibers, no onions, no. We call something probiotics. They are these little good germs yeah. that stay in our gut. They give us, the boost our immune system, give us a lot of protection. And these days, it's going even towards sleep, weight loss, and all that. A lot of research is going in there. Jene fidi omo, garlic fidi omo, cabbages fidi omo. Jene no In the nutrition realms, we call them prebiotics. But that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> that's for another day.
Ma, I pelle to data, a bonny day, star seven zero zero hash. B O Y Boy. Going home further together. Mama! A fade ye, who subet me in your queen as from co, I ye need ye ye power vodafone so. Ye the data bundles are any says so or gonna have braille. Ye more dire so, ye need us one ye now be. Ain't it back on your home? Ye data more need ye power be brave. We can do. Anything we put our mind to. Vodafone, further together. Yeni <laughs> especially Dr. Theodora Pepper, Uncle Bonkomo, our family is a full more cancer soon. Yeka, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, and uterine cancer. These organs make our woman unique. Welcome back. So now we can't fit your CNO. We'll be talking about Kokram and I said cancer na a tato in ba would ye muno. Survival new ovaries ni wumbu no man kasan kasan. Now to do that we have Dr. Theodora prepared with us to explain it more. Doc, welcome to Vodafone Healthline. Thank you so much. Uh, Doc, um, people would like to know more about yourself. You're the only one I didn't do that for a good reason. Please let us know more about you. Um, well, quite simply, I was actually born in Ghana. I reached hospital, attended Achimoto School, and was fortunate enough to be able to go to the UK to complete my training there. and went all the way up to become a consultant in a London teaching hospital. And I did that for a few years, mm. but then I decided that there was more that I could do, particularly in my area of expertise, which is cervical cancer prevention, to give back to my home country. Yes. So I decided to actually retire from the UK, work part-time. So since 2013, just working part-time there, doing a few clinics and really come back and give back. And mm -hmm. I realized that the greater need, apart from doing a small clinic, would be to get into training doctors and nurses mm -hmm. who are key mm -hmm. in women's health. Mm -hmm. I really want to push up a, a big up for our nurses in, in the Ghana Health Service to help us. Mm -hmm. And my father always used to say, you are where you are by an accident of birth. Mm -hmm. You could have been born to anybody. You're fortunate enough to be born into this family. He was a prominent industrialist. So uh, he's, they say that if you're fortunate enough to make it to the top, it's important to send the elevator back down. Send That's the elevator back down. Into a bar, so over the chain I see it. Move on the road for no Cochram or cancers that uh, plague women, especially in their reproductive areas. No? Can we all bunch it into one thing? Say, ni ni or the fact that it has different names mean that they present differently. Their prevalence is different. Treatment is different. Are they all very that different? And as someone na bomba. They they are they are quite different. I think the the main thing to say is that any abnormal bleeding in, in a woman or something that doesn't seem right. Women, they know their own bodies. They should be listened to and it should be sensitively investigated. Mm. Um, now the only, so the, the womb cancer and the ovarian cancer will normally have some symptoms. Okay. Now ovarian cancer is the one known as a silent killer. Wow. The reason is because by the time it presents with its symptoms, mm -hmm. it's actually already advanced. Okay. So the womb cancers, that normally presents with some bleeding. And if it's acted on early, so a patient needs to present early. Mm -hmm. And if they are listened to and investigated sensitively, often you can detect it okay. and um, treat that cancer. Mm. So womb cancer is one of the more treatable cancers. Mm. Now coming to cervical, now I'm going to talk more about the prevention of that because from zero to cancer is more than 10 years. So from the majority of time, it's at the pre-cancer stage. And we have a lot of time to detect it and treat it before it ever gets a chance to become a cancer. So of all the cancers you're talking about, the three cancers we're talking about, yes. ovary, um, let me see if I'm a good student, ovary, womb, and cervical. That's correct. Cervical is the most preventable. That's correct. Absolutely correct. And yet, that is one of our leading cancer killers. So it makes no sense. It doesn't. 
And that's because we're either not screening for it or when people do get screened, they're not getting the appropriate treatment. And therefore, this is a problem. We are also not vaccinating for it, but that's a, an, another issue. Mm. I would love us to focus on cervical cancer because of what you've just said. But in order for us to understand the other cancers, yes. um, could you briefly just tell us, um, you said the, by the time you find out they have ovarian cancer, anasekokomato ovrinimu, or the womb, no, it might be a little bit too late or something. Can you just make that simply for us before yes. we go into the cervical? How would you know you have any of those two before we go to cervical? Right. Okay. Apart so, from the bleeding. Okay. Yes. So, so I'm going to start with the ovarian cancer. Okay. That's the one that's known as the silent killer. Exactly. And, um, and, and that's the silent killer because by the time you have the symptoms of that, it's so advanced that um, most treatments will not work. So how would you uh, prevent that? How, how would, it, it, I'm it's, worried. <laughs> it's a difficult one because there isn't any proven screening tests for it in order to test. For a screening test to be good, the condition has to be detectable at the pre-cancer level or very early cancer okay. level. And we don't have that with ovarian. So one of, some of the symptoms that people get with ovarian is they may get um, bloating, okay. whereby I'm not just talking about just normal putting on weight, you know, because that happens to all of us. But you find that maybe around the waist particular, mm -hmm. just suddenly starts getting bigger. And then, mm -hmm. okay. but the rest of you may also be losing weight, but around the waist, uh -huh. you, you get but, bigger. Because you're called looking adult. That's correct. That's a very good description. And also um, a feeling of fullness because what happens is a lot of fluid um, uh, develops within the abdomen, mm. which makes you feel full because it's pressing on the stomach or they have difficulty breathing. So sometimes people may be asking you, oh, are you pregnant mm. when it's come over a short period of time? So these are some of the symptoms that for you may get for ovarian. Yo, na, na the cervical this way. Uh, so I can, yeah, you can't detect it even looking at the cervix audience, you can't tell that it's there okay. unless you do what's called a pap smear. Or we also have something called VIA, which is visual inspection with acetic acid. And a number of places are uh, now doing that where they will look inside the vagina and put some vinegar on, and that can help to s detect these pre-cancer changes. Mm -hmm. I'm emphasizing the pre-cancer because it will detect changes before it even gets a chance to become cancer. Mm. And there's at least a 10 year window for that, that right now we are missing those opportunities. Mm, 10 years, so when you're cancer, no? a be, a be koko. from the one, I could see mm. about 10 years, answer okay. that cancer, okay. cancer. The full 10 years, cervical cancer, you can prevent, you can treat it yes. at that time before yes. it becomes full blown cancer. Exactly, exactly. Hey. Before it even becomes an early cancer, early never cancer mind full blown, apple. yes. We, we can detect it. What are the I don't know what are those preventable things that we can do? What pap smear any V I A B. Apart from those you mean who she be. No, because you will not have symptoms. So sometimes people will say, Oh, I know my body. No. Eh. By the time your body starts talking to you with abnormal discharge or bleeding, that means that we are already looking for a cancer. If we're looking at the pre cancer in those stages, there are no symptoms whatsoever. It can only be picked up by this test of the visual inspection with acetic acid, which they, they can do in a lot of facilities now in Ghana. And um, uh, together with uh, uh, a doctor, Fan Battle Hospital, who is training a lot of nurses mm. at this as a physical cancer training center there to be able to go across the country. So we've trained, we've trained people uh, as have I, all the way Bogatanga, to Cape Coast wow. and everywhere, wow. so that women have somewhere to go to, go. to at least be able to access it. Because there's no point saying this is what you should do if there's nowhere to access the training True. because or to access the, the tests. So there are different tests for different pockets. And certainly um, VIA or visual inspector with the CTIC the is cheapest. actually the, the, the cheapest one. Mm. And we're hoping the government will get involved in helping to sponsor that yeah. as part of the national health insurance. Well, let's hope so too. But yes. regarding treatment now they've done it there's something a little bit there treatment is it expensive or is it simple can i just walk out is it is it dangerous the, the, the can it kill me or they take away my whole womb 
No, that's the, the important thing is that, remember we're dealing with pre-cancer, not cancer. Okay. So this is why if we detect it early, we can actually do simple treatments. Sometimes it's just a, a small freezing treatment or to um, burn the cells away. And these treatments have got minimal side effects. If it's left untreated and becomes a cancer, that's when you're looking at needing a hysterectomy. I am able to say prevention is so much. Say contribute to Australia. Must I tell you one one panier B? Vaccination. Being your mum, you say vaccination. Maybe now cervical cancer. So you mean vaccinate nipper? Yes. For the last uh, almost twenty years, there's been a vaccine available to prevent cervical cancer, and it's best so. given to school children um, before they are ever sexually active before. So the best age to give it is, uh, certainly in the UK, they're giving it from the age of 12. These vaccines can save lives. Mm -hmm. And I would stress that if people have daughters, the daughters, if you can afford it at the moment, again, the government says it's in their program, but it's some way down because we have other childhood vaccines to deal with. Today. But if you can, these are very good to do. And, and again, ideally, we would like to vaccinate even the boys mm. because when you have what we call herd immunity, it works best. If we can afford to vaccinate, we can eradicate a condition. Yeah, so course. it's very important. And they're already seeing the benefits of vaccination in countries that have done this, where now those people are, um, they vaccinated at 12. Now they're coming for the screening where in uh, overseas, they start at the age of 25. They're realizing that the levels of abnormal pre-cancer has drastically dropped. Wow. So, but at the end of the day, we are where we are in Ghana. We have a lot of people who already have the pre-cancer cells. So let's work on that while some years later, the vaccine will come to us. But we shouldn't just sit down and say we're doing nothing because we don't have the vaccine. There's still a lot we can do okay. to prevent. We can't talk about prevention without talking about the Adeba. So we can see how we can stop what brings, at least if we can do something about contracting it or getting it in the first place, perhaps it's a step to prevention. There isn't really much. And I want to try and remove the stigma that sometimes comes around this because um, the uh, pre-cancer abnormalities, which over some years, if not monitored or treated, can become cancer, uh, are caused by something called human papilloma virus. Mm. I don't want to be too scientific. HPV. But HPV. But this is extremely common. It causes like facial warts in children, the warts you get on the hand, verrucas, and, and also and it can cause genital warts. But those are not the kind of HPVs we're interested in. The ones we're interested in are what we call high risk types, which is what some pap smears can detect um, it, it, that we can do. And those ones, you don't see anything at all when you look mm. at the cervix. You don't see anything. Some of those patients say to me, but when the nurse did my pap smear, didn't she see the abnormality mm -hmm. that I said, because when it comes out, I said, no, you won't see anything, which is why it's very important to have the test done or, or when you have the VIA, when mm -hmm. we put the vinegar on, uh, acetic acid is the medical term for okay. vinegar. Same like salad vinegar. Okay. It's not anything it's worrying. It's strange, okay. Yeah. When you put the vinegar on, then the abnormal cells show up. But without that vinegar, you look at the cervix, it just looks smooth. So, in, in, and so therefore, I don't want us to use the HPV. Yes, it is spread through sexual contact, but it's not a sexually transmitted infection in that regard. No, okay. So we counsel women that just because you have an abnormal pap doesn't mean you go and hold your husband away if you be. Have you it been? doesn't yes. work like that. Okay. And it's very important to counsel patients because otherwise this thing can, you know, destroy relationships yes. if the correct counseling isn't explained. Mm. And what we'll say is that even somebody who's only ever been sexually active once needs to be going for pap smears Indeed. because it, it, you know, the, the virus can, can start through there. But most of the population, 80 to 90 percent of the sexually active population have had this HPV at some time or mm -hmm, another. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I've had it at some point. You have had it. It's very common and often the body can clear it on its own. Mm -hmm. Unless you have people maybe who have HIV or have had transplants where their immune system is depressed, they may struggle more and need extra surveillance. Mm -hmm. But usually the body can clear it, mm -hmm. but sometimes it can't. And those are the people that we want to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's in, it's in everybody. Men mm -hmm. also have it, but they are clearing it. And luckily for them, the virus doesn't like the penis. <laughs> but it likes the cervix. And that's why we have a cervical screening program. Indeed. We don't have a penile screening program. Okay. But it's everywhere. Well, 
Matio, yes, Empa, Doctor Theodora Pepper, I train your mother bray. Or say, Moban Tamwa, and you who cry, and you who cry, ten minutes, pets, and be a Hong Kong dear. Ten minutes, permit me be for now, which I need to do more. And I'll be banner after a ginsem. And then there are genes that are not the new treatments in there and not for. Thank you so much for joining me on Vodafone yeah. Healthline. You're welcome. We've learned so Thank much. You. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wonders they say shall never end. Can a man be pregnant? Today, in This Week in Medicine, we talk about a rare occurrence. You want to guess? Fetus in fetal. This is a rare congenital anomaly with an incidence of 1 in 500,000 births. In simple terms, it means a baby within a baby. It is characterized by the incorporation of one or more partially developed fetus into the body of an otherwise normally developed fetus. It was first described in 1800. Now, I'm going to go into some details for the young ones that want to be doctors or scientists. The rest can go on a commercial break. Here we go. Genetic studies suggest that this phenomenon occurs in monozygotic monochorionic diamnotic twin gestations when one twin is absorbed during the ventral folding of the trilamina embryonic sac. A lot of things to go, right? Well, this is not a cancer. The main adverse effect of this is from the pressure effect of the twin growing within the twin. Also, the twin within the other one feeds off the, uh, the normal twin. And that's the problem. We turn our attention to India, where a farmer, Sanju Bhagat, lived his whole life with a bulging abdomen, as though he was pregnant. Indeed, People in his community referred to him as the pregnant man. In 1999, he was rushed to the Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai because he had respiratory embarrassment. He just could not breathe. From the distended abdomen, hmm. to the surprise of the surgeons, there was an unusual creature within the abdomen with form limbs, fingernails, hair. Yes, indeed. Sanju was pregnant with his twin brother for 36 years. That's all we have for this week in medicine. Fetus in fetu. In that summer year can um we hungaka, but we yeah patch a day and tafun a cru tun keshe kunum. Usually ni ye fun into chede and tan a kubakesh kun ni ye fun se abofaban o or form your phone number. If you want, or done no, or book a shim, or book a shim, or ma, nunyan, or be shenum. Na no honam na na nunyan pedian. We form around nunyan we be shenum. Ne in a BC or India, ah, 1999. We get an operation with the nunyan we for 36 years. This is all we have for this one. Indeed, fetus in fetus. It's a rare condition. I hope today's episode of Vodafone Healthline has been both entertaining and educative. Before I leave, I'd like to talk about cancers. A few of them, like cervical cancer, breast cancer, can be picked up early through screening campaigns. Do well to get screened if you fall within the age group or have risk factors. Early detection saves lives. Till we meet again, stay safe and healthy. <laughs>